Machine learning, this is a hot topic. So let's talk about what machine learning or ML is. So before we get too far into the details, I want to talk about some terms that are often used interchangeably, but have certain differences. The terms like artificial intelligence, machine learning, and even deep learning. So at the highest level, AI is defined as leveraging computers or machines to mimic the problem-solving and decision-making capabilities of the human mind. And machine learning is a subset within AI that's more focused on the use of various self-learning algorithms that derive knowledge from data in order to predict outcomes. Finally, deep learning is another subset of machine learning. Deep learning is also referred to as scalable machine learning because it automates a lot of the feature extraction process and eliminates the number of human interventions to enable the use of some really big data sets. But today we will focus just on machine learning, so we will get rid of the other two. What is machine learning? In traditional programming, we are expressing rules in a programming language and those rules generally act on data and out of that we get answers. Machine learning turns this around. As input-output we pass the samples and the labels and as a result we get a trained model that maps one to another. One type of ML is called supervised learning. Supervised learning is defined by using labeled datasets to train algorithms that classify data or predict outcomes as accurately as possible. As the input data is fed into the model, it adjusts its weights until the model is appropriately adjusted. Supervised learning helps organization to solve a variety of real-world problems at scale, such as classifying spam in a separate folder from your inbox. The input dataset is generally called samples and the output is called labels. As a result, you get a trained model. Classification uses an algorithm to accurately assign test data into specific categories. It recognizes specific entities within the dataset and attempts to draw some conclusions on how those entities should be labeled or defined. It is commonly used for spam detection, image recognition, credit scoring and so on. Supervised learning can be separated into two types, classification and regression. Regression is used to understand the relationship between dependent and independent variables. It is commonly used to make projections such as for flight ticket calculation, stock prices and sales revenue. Next I want to show you how to use classification to implement something like a text language detection. So the idea is to say, these are the sentences in this specific language. For example, this is how an English or French sentence looks like and this is the correct language code for this sentence. And then we pass hundreds of thousands of sentences in English, French, Italian, German, etc. The computer can figure out the patterns between these and can learn from these patterns. Rubik's ML is a high-level machine learning and deep learning library for PHP. To install Rubik's ML, run this composer command. For the training process, it is not important where the data comes from. You can use a file, a database or an external API. The only important thing is that this data is mapped correctly into a proper array. For this example app, I use a CSV file with more than 50 samples to get a decent result. The first column contains a sentence and the second column the language name. The first step is to create an empty array for the samples and labels. Then read all lines from the CSV file and append it to that specific array. Since we are dealing with strings in this example, we need to convert them into a numeric representation. The pipeline is a meta-estimator that can transform an input dataset by applying a series of transformers. It's like a middleware. This is the list of transformers that will be applied to our given dataset. 
The Gaussian NB class is a version of naive bias classifier. It places a probability density function over the input features. The next step is to create a labeled object by passing the generated samples and labels array into the constructor. Then we call the train method of the pipeline object with the labeled dataset. Now our model is trained and we can try to predict something with it. Okay, here we have an example. I will explain it step by step. First we create an unlabeled array with the sentences you want to detect. Then call the predict method of the pipeline object and pass the dataset you are looking for. As a result you get an array with the predicted values. In this case we get a list of language names for each sentence of the input array. The index of the array remains the same. So the first value of the array refers to the first sentence of our input data set and so on. To make your model even more powerful from day to day, you can store your model into a file. To recreate the model, you can use the persistent model load method. To train the model with new, ex new samples and labels, just create a new labeled dataset and then invoke the partial method. After that, you can save the new model again and keep improving it over time. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. See you next time. Bye.